Hello! Today I'd like to take a look at Trepang. It's a game that has a laser focus on giving players an action-packed FPS experience that draws heavily from the classic game Fear. Special thanks go to Trepang Studios and Team17 for the review key. This review is based on a completed campaign across 15 hours of gameplay. All opinions are solely the authors. You're all busy people, so let me answer your most pressing question first. Are you going to enjoy it? The 30 second spiel is that this game is all about visceral, action filled, first person shooter combat. This game is a love letter to the classic FPS fear, and you'll find many of the same features as in the older game. You'll take on hordes of special forces that move intelligently and other monstrous enemies, as you use slow motion and other powers to shoot and melee a bloody path through the levels. This is a game that will appeal to players who enjoy FPS games, and particularly those who enjoyed Fear. Basically, if you like the combat in Fear, you'll find much to love about this game. If that sounds like something you'd like, then stay with me and we'll go deeper into the details. Trepang is a shooter where you play the part of an experimental subject trapped in a facility run by a rogue corporation called Horizon. Someone breaks into your room and frees you. Now it's up to you to slip through vents, find weapons, and fight your way through the facility to break out. As you escape, you'll be recruited by a faction that wants your services. Now it's time for revenge. But of course, nothing is ever as simple as that. The campaign takes place across six individual maps, including the prologue. Each of these maps is quite large and set in diverse locations ranging from industrial bunkers to corporate headquarters. I'm particularly fond of the castle map and all the old style furniture and architecture. The map layout is similar to Fear. You generally follow corridors that take you between rooms where you might fight enemies. The rooms will often have multiple paths, including the use of elevation that you and the enemy can use to outflank each other. This type of layout was a key in allowing enemies in fear to showcase their intelligence, and Trepang does the same. But at the same time, the game is very good at disguising the linear nature of the maps with twisting corridors, locked doors, and small side rooms. At the end of the day, the game is focused on combat, and when combat does happen, you always have multiple options to maneuver around in. You'll often find small rewards for exploring in the form of intel that fleshes out the background of the story, just like in fear and cases with weapon mods that give you permanent access to upgrades like silencers. Other collectibles like medkits and ammo are also found by exploring the side rooms. The use of light is a strong point in highlighting the look and feel of the environment, and darkness often plays a strong part in disorienting the player and giving them a sense of uncertainty. There's many times when environments feel a lot bigger than they actually are, because of how mazy some locations are and the disorientation from the darkness. Overall, the campaign maps are long enough to feel like you're actually invading an enemy's stronghold, and the variety of environments keeps them from getting too repetitive. Progressing the campaign also opens up side missions. These are smaller maps where you get to further sabotage Horizon's operations. Just like the main missions, you can find intel and weapon mods. You don't have to do them to finish the campaign, but it seems that they might open up some hidden endings that I haven't seen yet. There's also a combat simulator function at the base that you can use to practice against waves of enemies. Killing enemies gives you money and you can use that to buy different types of weapons between waves. It's basically a multiplayer map versus bots. Of course the centerpiece of Trepang's gameplay is the combat, so we should look at it in more depth. The best way to understand Trepang is to imagine a modern version of fear because the devs have been pretty clear about their inspirations. You get the same slow-mo ability that was so iconic in Fear, but now supplemented with a short-term cloak that allows you to set up for ambushes and lose enemies that have spotted you. Being stealthy is important because enemies hit pretty hard, but don't expect to stay hidden through the entire mission because enemies will spot corpses and coordinate a search of the area. This is a very important aspect of the game, enemies only act on what they know. They don't magically know where you are, they investigate shots or your flashlight and will go on high alert if they spot corpses, but you can't stay hidden by moving and taking cover to break line of sight. Once they spot you, they move to surround your last known position. Exposed soldiers take up cover, some stay back, and the heavies will move to flush you out. They'll throw grenades and try to flank. If you cloak or break line of sight, you can actually flank them back. Key to winning firefights is to keep moving and immediately change positions if you're spotted. 
Use that to flank the enemy, which is a must against heavily armored ones. This is not a cover shooter and simply staying where you are is a recipe for failure. The obvious question in that case is, how well do the movement and animations work? The gameplay is very smooth and responsive. I personally found zero issues with moving how I wanted to where I wanted to go, and the enemies move in a realistic manner with smooth animations. Even during the most frantic of firefights, the game ran smoothly and without a hitch. For the record, I was playing on 1080p and epic quality settings on a GTA 2060 card. It looks like most people will be able to get the same level of smoothness, even if it means dropping the visual quality a few steps. Sliding is what I recommend to move fast. You don't have to sprint to slide. Just pressing the slide button will get you sliding in the direction you set. And yes, you can slide sideways or even backwards to avoid fire and explosions. Sliding into enemies will throw them about, and you can take advantage of that to finish them or grab them to use as mid-shields. This is particularly useful for enemies with shields. Combine the slide with the slow-mo and you can get some really great cinematic kill sequences. So move, and always keep moving. Being caught out in the open will get you killed. Use cloak to get back into cover, and slow-mo to pull off ambushes on groups of enemies. The game further encourages an aggressive and mobile style by having enemies drop armor to make up for any damage you take. Every kill gives you back some stamina so you can keep punching enemies. You should be able to take out a group of enemies in one go if you use a combination of slow-mo, accurate gunfire, slides, and melee attacks. Trapang is a very similar variety of weapons to fear. You start with a handgun as your first weapon, but it's pretty powerful on its own right and quite good at killing enemies. Then you get access to some machine guns and rifles. They fire fast, which is a must against the groups of enemies you'll face, but aren't the most powerful. Which is the opposite of the shotgun, you can easily blast an enemy into a bloody splatter with one shot. Later on you can unlock a bolt gun, grenade launcher, and finally a minigun. The bolt gun is a highlight against bosses, because it fires explosive bolts for extra damage, but it's limited by a very small clip. But an improvement over fear is that weapons can be modded. You can add silencers and laser pointers to pistols and submachine guns to double down on a stealthy approach. Scopes and laser pointers to rifles. And incendiary shells to the shotguns, which makes them even more spectacular to use. As I mentioned before, you pick up mods by exploring during missions, and from then on, you can apply the mods whenever you come across the supply box. But if you happen to pick up a weapon with a mod that you don't have, you can keep that mod weapon until you swap it out. For example, Special Forces enemies will often drop silenced submachine guns with laser pointers well before you unlock them. As you might expect, there's a variety of enemies to take on. You've got your soldiers and Special Forces operatives. They move in squads and do all the intelligent movement I covered earlier. Different types of soldiers all look the same and you never see faces, which was obviously done as a way to save development time and make the game run better. It works well and doesn't detract from the focus on the combat experience at all. Soldiers also give you the same combat chatter that was such a feature in Fear. It seems that some people mistakenly believe that Fear enemies only seem to be intelligent because of the chatter, but that's not true. Fear enemies did actually take cover and use side passages provided by the maps to flank you. It's just that the chatter enhanced the feeling of being in a firefight. Trapang is the same, you definitely feel like you're in a proper firefight. And of course the evil corporation has been conducting unethical experiments so expect to fight biological monstrosities that will recall the horror elements of fear. A standout feature of Trapang is the customization the game gives you. By default the game has a lot of difficulty levels, and normal, the second easiest, is not a walk in the park. You'll have to really make full use of all your abilities and weapon mods on the harder difficulty settings. Beyond that, the game offers a massive amount of customization options. 
you can fiddle around with the UI to disable things like crosshairs and health markers to change the user interface and make the game more movie-like if you want. There's also settings that you can toggle to change the gameplay and make it easier or even harder than it already is. These are unlocked by finishing different maps at different difficulty levels. It's commendable that the devs have gone so far out of the way to allow players to customize their experience. Essentially, the focus of the game is in the combat you experience. The game itself isn't very long. You should be able to finish the campaign in about 10 hours on normal. But this combination of different difficulty levels, plus the range of customization, means that even if you're replaying the same maps, your combat experience will be different across different runs. Even people who don't play many FPS games should be able to experience the game on easy. But at the same time, even the most skilled players are likely to find the challenge with some of the more difficult custom settings. Trapang is a love letter to fear. It captures the essence of the classic and adds a modern polish to it. I try to review games by showing viewers the objective facts so that you can judge for yourself rather than just telling you how I feel about something. But I will say that as someone who loved Fear's gameplay, I love the demo and I'm glad to be able to say that the full game lives up to what was promised. Thanks for watching all the way to the end. Let me know what you thought about it in the comments. Feel free to leave a like, subscribe and hit the bell button to be notified when new videos come out. See you soon.